Now, as to be expected with the recent announcement that Chuck Dixon has officially joined the Ripperverse, there were, of course, going to be a lot of haters that were going to be coming out. As to be expected. When we have another announcement this upcoming Monday, it'll be the same thing. <laughs> It's going to be a bunch of people that are going, just the same group of idiots that are going to pretend to be mad at something. And then when we launch next month, I saw them too. Boy, they're really going to be mad then. And, you know, they pick and choose things to figure out, like, or find out something to dislike or whatever. That's what haters do. You can't ignore them away. That's just their job. This is why I say don't let them do it for free. You might as well make a little money off of these idiots. However, there was someone that messaged me something that I found very, let's say this was hilarious to me. I'm going to actually walk you through some of this stuff. So the first initial post that they said, and I'm going to go over it here. And this again is somebody who has blocked me actually talking about hey, the announcement, all this stuff. They, she says, they say, they, them, I don't know who this person is, says, why do these people think that something making money equals being good. He can make as much money as he wants because it has no effect on the industry. Okay. Uh, Marvel is doing better than ever. Uh, that's debatable. Comics are in general doing great. Again, we've covered this topic. If you want to have your head in the clouds or whatever, or in the sand, not the clouds in the sand. And he'll never get hired by a major publisher. So this is a lot of what we dealt with before in that people the perceived legitimacy of companies that are massive. So they think that they're somehow like, that's the end game. And this is why you see a lot of brain lit, like comic pros, people that have desire to be in the industry. And they're all fighting for acknowledgement from their peers. They're fighting for awards. They're fighting for, to be published by this big, massive uh, corporate entity. And they look at that, like that's the end game. Like that's the measure of success, even if they're broke. Now I said here, that would be a regression. If I got hired by a major publisher, considering that I'm my own publisher, something had to have gone wrong. If it was like a one-off thing, which I don't see why I would accept that. I don't even have the time to do that. That's one thing. But like going out of my way to try to be published by a major publisher would be a regression. I'd be losing. Continues to say, Eric, you know you could never have gotten hired by at a major, major publisher in the first place. Who are you kidding? I don't care. Continues on. Of course, now that you've entered the grift, which remember, grift means ideological enemy seeing success. That's what they, that's what they mean by that. Uh, it would be a regression in terms of money. Yeah, uh, it would. Uh, it'd be a serious demotion. Uh, but to claim that it would be a regression in terms of being respected as a man and being respected as a moral person, as somebody who can actually produce content, that's ridiculous. Well, I've already proved that I can produce content by selling ISOM and making $3.7 million on a campaign. That's already been proven. See, this is the way I see it. The people that I want respect from and I value getting their respect, are I already got respect from them. And those are my customers. Getting respect from peers is useless to me. It doesn't equal sales. It doesn't equal money, certainly. It doesn't equal people's having genuine support. It's just a cosign from a guy that does what I do. I don't care about that. That's not useful to me in, in, in any way, shape, or form because it doesn't equal me like getting like better at the craft or making more money by way of sales because you know we we've expanded that it doesn't help me this is what they said working for a major publisher doesn't gain your respect that's where you earn it this is an archaic model i've been reading comics longer than you've been alive congratulations uh your your it was she said you are but i'm pretty sure, sure she meant your ignorance and moronic comics gain your lack of respect from most industry peers. That's fine. If my industry peers don't respect me, that's fine. I'm richer than pretty much all of them. Um, let's say there may be a, a, like Todd McFarlane and other guys that have their own kind of things that they're going and there's a, it's a handful, but like your run of the mill writer or artist, I am outpacing every single one of them. Like that's just, a, that's not an opinion. That's, that's just a fact. Um, 
I don't know if you guys understand how the economics of being a writer in Marvel Comics or DC Comics or any other major publisher, they're not paying you by the millions to go do comics over there, okay? They're just, just letting you know that. Um, not not only lack of respect, they think you're an idiot. And, and this goes back to the perceived legitimacy. And again, I don't care. <laughs> It's like, okay, a bunch of people that don't like me, or we're always not going to like me, don't like me. And I think that's what what pisses these guys off the most is that like we don't go through them. They can't gatekeep that. There's no channels that we have to go through in order to publish our stuff. We just put out what it is that we want, and they can sit up here and screech and scream and say it sucks, say it's the worst thing in the world, and it's, go it's unimpactful. And sure, it's not going through them. And they might see that as something that's to be delegitimized, but I see it as, hell, that, that makes me especially successful. You mean to tell me that instead of going through a major publisher and trying to rely on established characters or established brands, or established mediums or established uh, retailers in order to purchase a product to make it seem like I'm being successful, I had to start from scratch. And just using the success that I had had in other ventures that I've, I've accomplished, be it my channel, my music or whatever it was as a commentator speaker, I leveraged that. And then I had to give people what it is that they want. I think that's the part that you have to remember. There are people with comparable followings, the people with bigger followings that have not done anything near the degree of what I someone did. You know why? Because it's not just simply having a massive following isn't enough. Sure. You have a launching pad there, but if you don't give something to people that they want, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't really it really matter. I can't just sell anything. Uh, if that were the case, let's say I would have um, I would have went platinum on records and all this stuff. And we had very very a lot of success with with backwards. You know, we were the number two alternative. I see. I saw a lot of success. Say that we were the number two alternative, a uh, number one actually alternative new artist according to Sound Scans the week that we were released, and we were the number two Heat Seeker album on Billboard Ver Veracity. So yeah, obviously we saw a lot of success, but I ain't like I sold a million records or something. You know, but there's nothing that I've done like from a units perspective in terms of pushing units that I've done. that's even comparable to what we did with the Riververse. You know why? And I'm sorry if you hear beeping and stuff. That's the forklift and stuff going off in the background. But yeah, like nothing compares. We have seen success. We push units and, and, and it's because of we of, of us presenting something that the customers wanted and they went out of their way to pay. Simple as that. But let's just be a lesson. I always try to tie these up with a lesson for aspiring creatives. This is how a lot of people think. And if you think this way, yeah, you're sure to end up as broke as a lot of comic pros, where it seems like every other week we got some comic pro sitting here talking about them not getting paid, missing missing uh, payments on contracts and not really eating. Hell, you got a whole writer's thing going on right now. Hell, and even Hollywood where people talking about pay your writers and stuff. So all y'all working for the big dogs and somehow y'all have amounted to being screwed over and, and abused. Yeah, I guess that's to gain the respect from it. It's, it's like the starving artist guy on uh, that debate uh, that uh, the monetize your haters discussion that we had with that one idiot who's like, yeah, you just should be broke. This is the same line of thinking where they have an expectation of how they think things are supposed to go. And then when you're not going that way, and even though you see success, they can't say that you're not successful. So they have to try to demonize the success itself by saying, well, you didn't go through what we did. And the, often these people don't even work for Marvel or DC, but they look at that as some sort of accomplishment. They hear the facts. So be mad at me all you want, but here are the facts. I make more money than pretty much all these cats. Uh, I'm in a position where I'm able to give people good paying jobs. So correct the market issues that have plagued art and entertainment industries by giving my contractors and employees well paying gigs. Okay. So I'm in a position to employ artists, writers, back office folk, whatever executives i get to pay these guys great jobs while being a creative and kind of the the honcho if you will and kind of leading the charge because it does go to my beat make no mistake but to be in that position is a beautiful thing and i'm thankful and i'm blessed to be in it so you can be mad at me all you want but please do understand that we're not stopping and we're just getting started
If you enjoyed this video and want to support other content, please become a member at ericdjuly.com. This is my own unique platform that replaced my Patreon. Our Ultramax, which is our highest tier, gets free shipping domestically even with Ripperverse orders and are able to redeem the Creator's Edition copy of ISOM number one. You can move up and down tiers or cancel at any time. Also visit Ripperverse.com. This is my comic book company that launched a $3.7 million campaign. We appreciate your support.